Cooler Master by name and Cooler Master by nature. And now they're available at EvTech. Good afternoon, morning. welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the 4Ps Ryan here, Walker Triple XL. We have the Cooler Master stuff. And I was not expecting this kind of performance from a 240mm rad. Also, I have done the microcode update to the 13600K, so it's made things a bit different. I'm gonna have to redo every single test that I've ever done with this thing. My whole baseline system has been thrown out completely because the differences are wild. But it still produces quite a lot of heat. So it's still actually a really good CPU for what we wanna do with it. And uh, with a full microcode update though, this Cooler Master 240L ARGB core edition of the Master Liquid series, what a mouthful. But um, yeah, at least you won't get confused between model numbers too easily because uh, they're longer than my future um, by the looks of things. And uh, you won't be confounded by the performance as much as I was. This has a 2600 RPM pump. I thought, oh man, this is going to be an oof out the gate for Cooler Master. It made me kind of sad because I haven't been able to do a review on their product on the channel for a very long time. I've always had a soft spot for the brand. I, yes, I've had a Cooler Master Enforcer way back when. Um, always loved their cases. They're a little bit different, right? And uh, with their water coolers as well, I got the first edition of this and it was really good. And then now this one is really good. So <laughs> it's it's kind of unreal. Anyway, let's go through what's in the box. So inside of this nice bit of packaging over here, you've got all of the furnishings and fittings you might need. There's two back plates for Intel, and then for AMD, it uses the existing mount, the existing one that will come with your motherboard and has actually a really, really easy attachment type of style, which most of the brands are doing for AM4 and AM5 stuff. So uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's based on the normal clip system, um, but then yep, the pump head on this is absolutely fantastic. It is really plain and simply finished but the actual faceplate of it is pretty well polished, I've got to say. It's actually quite quite uh, nicely lapped over there. The fans have got full rubberizing in all of the corners, which we love to see, and they're typical, just generally good Cooler Master quality. Quite light, I've got to say, overall. The finish on this rad is absolutely fantastic as well. It's got like a um, sandblasted kind of paint scheme on it. Uh, it feels uber premium as well. It looks quite nice too. So yeah, we 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 like that. We like that quite a lot. Do, doing good stuff with the product finish at at least. They've still got a normal fan system where you get a, a two split uh, PWM header for the fan connector and then you've got a three into one daisy chain system for the RGB. It does come with little clips to hold them in place but the force on them was so good and so positive I don't even think you really need to use it to be quite honest with you. Installation was typically easy breezy it's just for standoffs on this side with the back plates and then screw in from the top. Uh, would have been nice to have some um, a little, uh, spring, spring loaded tension on them just to make sure that you don't over tighten but I suppose if it's too spec like this and it clearly is working as we'll see with the performance results yeah you, you're not gonna have a problem with this cooler it's ex exceptional performance so we did I did the latest bias update which changed the micro code for the 13th gen stuff so multi-threading performance went from like uh, 21,000 to like 19 and change. So I don't really have a baseline for testing with that. But with this, even with this update, we can see the um, actual speed of the of the chip uh, per core, and we can still see how much better the average temperatures were. And it is day and night. This thing absolutely annihilated the H100. I didn't expect it to be that much better. I restarted it and ran the test again just to make sure because I thought maybe there was some sort of performance offset or something from the one to the other but it's just clear based on the performance results like you're going to get a faster core clock per thing like three four hundred megahertz per core um, comparative at a much better temperature and so the RPM on the pump is not always the be all and end all they've kept their dual chamber design they've just neatened it up so where these tubes actually come out of the side of the pump over here, 
the one is higher than the than the other um, and that's because it's a dual chamber type of pump so it's got even though it's got lower rpm it doesn't really matter because it's is definitely moving more water. Even on the 100% fan test, there wasn't a huge difference between that and this at 50%. The fans can get a little bit rowdy. At 25%, like 800-ish RPM, you're not really gonna hear them. At 50%, things start to get a little bit more, more audible, but still very quiet. 75% is where things start to get a little bit rowdy and you are gonna have some uh, noise from the fans and then 100% it's going to be quite obvious these things hit 1800 rpm quite casually so very good for included fan kit as well but the factor with water cooling is you don't you never should need all of the fan curve because the actual pumps performance is going to affect the overall cooling performance the most because if AROs and well all water cooling systems as they run, they get to a thermal efficiency point for the whole loop. There's hot spots and stuff throughout, but the water temperature averages over time like that. Ada is also a very synthetic workload. It's even, it's even a little bit harsher on the CPU than a rendering workload, which leaves a bit of space for windows and stuff to run. Ada doesn't do that. Ada takes the whole CPU and drops its elbow in its face. And like I said, when I did Cinebench testing, things were really out of whack. I've got to create a new baseline for that. But just off the ADA results, you can see how well this thing performed. It's absolutely incredible. Good job, Cooler Master. I'm so happy to report this. I believe they give a three-year warranty on this sucker and it's a 1,400 rand. And available on Uncle E-Tech. Finally, we have some really competitive, pretty nice looking as well, albeit, a little bit understated on the faceplate, but maybe sometimes that's what you want. The Bauer actually saw a video from Gamescom with him and uh, Ace, uh, or Uncle Asus, where he was saying he's, RGB is a red flag. I agree with you, sir. DRGB the world. If you want the RGB on, it's got it. The diffusing is pretty good. The fans, fantastic. Uh, you don't need all of that RPM, but they've got plenty of headroom um, in case maybe your case has got a, suffering a little bit of airflow. Uh, or something like that but I would just install it up top as you can see from the test bench setup we built this bracket so that the high point would be furthest away from the cooler and you can actually hear it when you connect it all the air going out of it so I waited for that point on both coolers did the test and it was just an absolute bully beat down anywho that's all I've got for you on this 240L I flip and dig it that's a classic straightforward cooler master good time if you have enjoyed this review Please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and I will see you on the flip side.